There's an old saying in Yorkshire, if thou want someone doing, thou might as well do it this end. But what if I told you there's a way to do it even better with a bit of clever tech to lend a hand? Now, if you use tools like ChatGPT for a while, you'll know it's often quite tricksy to get high quality written content out of it. A lot of it, well, it's just the same old, same old. So I got asked by someone if I could create an automation that creates content in the style of that blooming clever chap, Neil Patel. He's an expert on SEO and digital marketing, you know. They wanted it to use the same kind of structuring that Neil uses, and so, because I'm a Yorkshireman, I automatically said, yes. So let's come and have a deck at how I did it. If you follow along, you'll be able to build it yourself and have your own little Neil Patel, or whoever you want, creating your content in two shakes of a lamb's tail. Flipping marvellous. Okay, so first, let's take a look at exactly how we're going to set this up. So first of all, we have a... Google Sheet, and across the top, there's a few things that I'm collecting. The focus, which is the, the topic, effectively, of the article. The type, um, you know, what kind of feel I want to the article. And the style, the audience, the length of it, well, the target length. And then we've got some of these um, other elements that we haven't provided yet. The file ID. All of these, by the way, will be generated automatically the image prompt the id whether the article's been completed and then keywords meta description an excerpt and some tags along with a folder id for exactly where our data is going okay so i've just filled one of these in i've called it 10 tips to improve your linkedin profile and make it more engaging the sort of thing that neil patel would definitely be writing about Let's go and take a look now at our uh, scenario in Make. Now, it does look like quite a big, long scenario, but it's actually very, very simple. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to search the sheet, this one here. And what we're going to do is we are going to make sure that the focus exists and the type exists and the audience exists and we've set a length. We're going to make sure that the file ID does not exist as of yet. There's no image ID and no image prompt because we don't want those things uh, which have already been done to be done again. For now, just for testing, I'm just going to return one row. Okay, so um, because I might be returning more than one row, it's going to pass through an iterator. This will simply allow it to do um, one row at a time. And then the first thing that happens is we're going to create a folder on the Google Drive because I'm going to keep the document in there and I'm going to keep the image that we create in there. Later on, if we want, we can automate the whole process of publishing them on our blog, but we'll save that for another time. So what we're going to do is in a location on my drive called Articles, which is here, um, currently it's empty, we are going to create a new folder with the same name as the focus. That's the topic that comes from here. So we're going to create a folder called 10 Tips to Improve Your LinkedIn Profile and make it more engaging. And in there we're going to have uh, eventually our uh, text content and we're going to have a featured image to go with it. Okay, next we're going to go to uh, OpenAI using our OpenAI key and we are going to create a, a completion and I've done this in two steps. I've created a system role where I've told it um, who it is and, and what it does. I've told it what the task is. I've told it a couple of very specific things like do not actually write the article, just create the section headings and between four and eight key points for each section. And then I've given it some specific requirements for the output. And then I've given it an output example, exactly how I want it to appear. In this case, it's going to look extremely HTML, which is good because this will eventually allow us to paste it into our Google document really easily. And that will allow us to then um, put it onto our uh, blog site, um, wherever that may be, dead easy. Um, after this, I've got a little three second delay. I don't know why. I just like to have delays in there. I think it's always good to give the AI a rest for a moment. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. 
Next, we're going to write the actual article. And here, what we're going to do is we're going to pass it a system message and a user message again. This time, the system message will tell it it must write like Neil Patel. Um, there's a few specifics about that. You can obviously craft this however you want, by the way. Um, we're going to make sure the article is is structured in a particular way and you know if possible give some helpful pro tips in each subtopic something that neil does an awful lot of um, we're aiming to provide value just like neil and we're giving it the titles and key talking points and the type of content to be produced um, we're going to output it in a html format and we're going to tell it exactly how to do that so it's just going to be titles h2s p's now obviously if you want to get a bit more structured than this and start bringing in more elements hey you can build your um, ai however you want in the user role i'm going to pass it these variables i'm going to give it the topic the type of article the audience and the target length and remember these all come from our sheet here so these four variables are what we're passing through and as you can see, we can just map them straight from the output of our first module on Google Sheets. Um, and this is pretty much what it looks like for me. You can have it however you want, but the output, you must get the output that we had from the earlier request to OpenAI. And that will come from the choices message dot content. It's then going to um, create a new document, a new Google Doc, and it's effectively going to put the content that we get from this uh, second completion directly in as the content. It's going to give it the name, which is the same as the focus again, and it's going to put the location as the new folder location that we created here in step three. Okay. Then we're going to update our Google Sheet and what we're going to update it with is the file ID of the document that's just been created. And we're obviously going to put the folder ID in there as well um, while we're writing to it. The reason I haven't done this before is that I don't want to use up too many operations. I've just done it all in a single operation. Next, we're going to convert the HTML to Markdown. Um, so we just simply get the response from the last GPT completion, the right article one. And then we are going to create an image prompt. So um, what we're going to do is we've given it again a system role and a user role. In the system role, we've told it what it is. We're going to tell it it's going to create an outline structure to a blog article and to create a prompt using DALI 3. It's going to give it uh, a few instructions about things like aspects, no text on it, um, other than the DALI prompt should be returned, and the, the, uh, the title of the image should be relevant for the given audience. In fact, I'm going to um, put the image um, should be relevant for the given um, title, uh, given topic the type of content and so on. Um, it should be rich detail and photo realistic and I want it to output it exactly like this, the image prompt you created image. In the user role, I am going to send it the uh, the topic again, the type of content, the audience that it, it's going to be for and the article text which comes from our final markdown step. Then we're going to pass what's returned there through a text parser because we know what's going to come back is going to be between an image and an end image tag so we want to use regex to capture everything and that's the um that's the expression to capture everything between those two tags so that's going to pass it um, it is multi-line and you need to make sure that's clicked because the prompt that it comes back with will more than likely be multi-line and the text that we're going to do it on is the text that comes from the image prompt um, before which you can see bouncing away right now we are going to set the variable for the image prompt and we are going to add aspect ratio 16 to 9 on to the end of that 
Then we are going to go and generate the actual image. Um, what we are going to do is pass the prompt. We're going to make sure it was set to DALI 3. We're going to create the following image and we're going to get the image prompt from the variable that we've just set. We're going to, we can actually set the size of the image here. So we probably don't even need the aspect ratio there. Quality standards fine, style vivid is fine. Um, and the response format wants to come back in as a URL. Then once that's completed, we're going to get that image. We're going to um, have a HTTP get a file request. We're going to pull that from the generate an image completion. We don't need to serialize the URL or share cookies or anything like that. And then we're going to upload that image to our Google Drive into the folder that we made earlier with the new file name, which is the same as the topic focus. And we're going to have it as the HTTP get file. We don't want to convert the file. That's absolutely fine. That will simply get our uh, image and plonk it into our Google Drive. Finally, we're going to create one more completion. This is where we are going to create primary, uh, secondary keywords, meta descriptions, um, and an article excerpt um, for things like publishing to a WordPress website. Um, it, we require it to follow these instructions very carefully. Um, the primary meta keyword must appear in the article title. And the secondary keyword has to appear in the text at le or in one of the H2 headings at least once. Um, we've given it a few other things there. The excerpt should be more than 25 words in length. Description, no more than 159 characters. I like doing that because otherwise it can truncate it. Um, I'm going to ask it to output more, uh, uh, no more than 10 tags with each of the tags separated by a comma. I'm then going to give it a desired output format. And this is really important because we're going to pass these in the next step. So primary keyword is going to be between the open primary keyword and the close primary keyword tag. We're going to put that in there. Same with the secondary keyword. There's the open, there's the close. Same with the meta description. There's the open, there's the close. And the same with excerpts. And then the tags are going to be tag one, comma, tag two, comma, tag three, and so on and so forth. We're giving it a user role as well. And that user role is where we're going to pass it the topic, the type of content, the audience, and then I'm going to give it the markdown text. Um, so we've stripped out all of the um, HTML um, from the initial uh, writing. So it's got the context of the article in full. It's then going to do some parsing. So what comes back here, we're going to first of all pass the primary keyword. So remember, we want to get everything between the primary keyword and the closed primary keyword tag. So we simply use this regex here. Now, because it's just a single keyword, it probably shouldn't be multi-line. Um, it should just be a single word. So I've got it set as multi-line here just in case. We'll leave that checked for now. Um, we're going to do the same with the secondary keyword. And then we're going to do the same with the passing of the meta description. So everything between the meta description and the closed meta description tag um, is going to be passed. We're going to do the same with the excerpt. It's exactly the same regex. Um, then we're going to do the same with the tags. And then finally, with all of those, we are going to update our Google Sheet. And what you can see now is we've got the image prompt that's going to be saved. We've got the new image ID is going to be saved. That's the location, uh, the file ID of the actual image on the Google Drive. We're going to make sure that it says the article is complete. So um, we've got a nice little flag that's been set there. And then the primary keyword, well, that's going to come from this one here, from the uh, primary keyword. The secondary keyword will do the same. And the meta description will get that from the meta description pass, and so on and so forth, the excerpts and the tags. And it's going to drop them into our uh, sheet here. All right, so let's run it and see what happens. So first of all, we're going to open our sheet. It's going through the iterator. It's created a uh, folder on our drive. Let's check that. Okay, there it is. It's just created that folder. 
um, it should now be creating the section headers and the subtopics with OpenAI. Let's just wait for it to complete that. Okay, that's done. Let's have a look at the output while it's doing the next part. We can see the output will be able to be found here under choices and um, bundle number and then the message and the content. So now we can see that there will be a, uh, a section here and we've got our section H2 and then we've got our list of um, subtopics in here as an unordered list. So that's that's absolutely fantastic. And it's been pretty thorough. It's given us quite a lot there. Typically a lot more than you might get just by using chat GPT. Um, it's had a little sleep, three seconds, and now it's on to actually crafting the article, which it's then going to score, store into our Google Doc. We'll just give that a moment to complete because it is quite a long article it's doing right now. Okay, it's finished writing the article. It's now saving it all into a Google Doc, which we should now be able to see on here. Fantastic, look at that. It's all been nicely laid out for us. It's given us the, um, the headings. It's given us these really, really helpful tips at the bottom, and it's got bullets, nice and easy to read. There's 10 whole sections in there. That's fantastic. So it's pretty much done what we wanted in terms of actually creating really well-structured content over three pages. I mean, when was the last time you got some content out of ChatGPT that was three pages long and perfectly structured? Um, okay, after that, it's updated our Google Sheet. So we should now be able to see the file ID in there. And the folder ID should have gone in, which it did. And then it converts that to Markdown, creates the image prompt, and then it should pull out the actual prompt. There it goes. That's what it's done. Fantastic. Um, and then it will create the image based on the prompt. It will get the image file, which it appears to have done. There you go, there's the data for the image file. It's going to upload that to our Google Drive. We should be able to check that now. Let's just go back up a level to articles and back into here. There is our image file. Let's have a look, see what it looks like. That'll do for me. Yeah, suppose we could always change the image up if we want, but I think that's a fair enough cover image for these purposes. Um, once it's done that, it was going to get all of our meta, which we'll just check that it has actually done that in the message. There you go, there's all our keywords, our meta description and all the rest of it. And then it's going through the parsers to pull each individual keyword, the meta description, the excerpt and the tags out and finally plop them in the sheet. So we should now be able to see all of that in our sheet as well. There we go, there's the image prompt, the image ID, the article's complete, there's the primary keyword, secondary keyword, description, excerpts, some tags, and there you go. That is how to set up a much, much better system for authoring automated content, writing much more like Neil Patel without you having to go through the unbelievable headache of constantly prompting your chat GPT. So I hope that's been useful for you. Until the next time, I hope you've enjoyed these tales of AI coming to Yorkshire. Ta-ra for now.